So we are in the homestead here. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little project. I saw somebody else do it and thought it was pretty cool. So I'm gonna do it. I have some of this stuff here anyway. Um, so I'll show you what you need to do this. Something you can do with your kids if you want or just to have something for like an emergency bag, that kind of thing. So we'll get to it. All right, so what we're gonna do here is make a candle out of an Altoids tin. So this has nothing in it because I ate all of them. Altoids tins used to be a lot bigger thing for little survival kits. Actually, I wanted my truck with fire kit stuff in it, but then you need some lamp wicks. These were $3 at Old Wally World. You can get a bunch of places though. But you're gonna need some lamp wicks, some candles, old candle stubs will work. These are tea candles that are burnt up a little bit, but um, any kind of wax will work for this. Some aluminum foil, coffee helps. A um, pair of scissors to cut your wicks or a knife and then something that you're going to melt the wax in. I'm actually going to line this with aluminum foil so that it's easier to clean up. But really anything will work. If you have like a double boiler, that would, that would probably work best because then you have the, the water up around it to boil it. But you just have to get these melted down and into a container because we're going to transfer them to this. My foil in my cup here. This is just one of the, my little stainless steel um, Walmart cup that I use for camping. And then I actually have a pan. I decided I'm gonna put some water in here and then set this in there to kind of help control that temperature. Kind of like a double boiler, um, cause actually it's the fumes off of the wax that burn. Uh, so you gotta be careful. You don't wanna start a fire in your house. Um, probably do this outside too, but hey, it's my video. So we're gonna get the candles in here and then into there so we can start melting it down. So while that's melting, you're probably wondering why would I want to put um, those candles in this if I have candles. So you can use like little candle stubs maybe or pieces that don't burn anymore. Maybe they're tiny. That's what you want to use or junk kind of junk candles or if you get the jar ones in the bottom um, where they get really low and they're not burning or they're hard to light. You can also take that and put that in hot water in a pan or a pot and boil the water and it'll melt that wax and then dump it into a container lined with either aluminum foil or like an old soup can and then use that to make this. So the other thing with this too is that it's a candle that when it's done, um, you can just put it out like that. It's all self-contained and then you can use that for a bunch of stuff which I'll go over a little bit later. Um, little things that you can do with candles, little small candles. So I've carried just the tea light candles before and used them to start fires. You can get you can get a hundred of those things for three bucks at Walmart. I was just at Walmart. So um, I have a ton of them. Those are extra ones that I had burnt before for something. So that's why I'm using those now. So anyway, um, we will get to the next part. We got to make the wick to sit in this. And there's a certain little trick you can do to keep um, these wicks upright. You can probably hear my stuff boiling in the background there. So you don't need a big piece of aluminum foil. Um, you're going to want to do something about the width of the container there. Maybe a little more because you can't put it back, right? So pull that off. You're going to get that flat. And then what you're going to do is this is going to stand up your wick. So take a wick out here, which I probably should have done before I hit record. so that it's the same length as the container. So in that container, maybe a little bit past it. So you have the little extra, and then you're gonna cut that off. Kind of marked it there. Cut that off. And get a little extra piece you can save for later. And then that's what's gonna go in there. I need to take a little more off of that. A hot mess in my kitchen. Okay, so that's a good length. So then what we're gonna do is we gotta build the base for it. So for the base, we want this to be kind of rigid. So we could, since it's a little wider, um, fold the end in a little bit here. Probably don't need this much aluminum foil, honestly. 
So if we don't, we can tear it off and save it. So that. Hold it in, in here. What you're going to do. Yeah, I'll probably take about half of that. Okay, so you take that. This is going to be your wick stand. So you're going to, I would probably you do this a billion different ways. Um, I'm just going to kind of do what I think is going to work. I've never done this before. So we're going to fold that up. Make that more rigid. And then I'm thinking if we do something like, can you tell I'm trying to figure this out as I go? Kind of pinch, pinch up one side. We'll make like a tripod thing, stand it up. So kind of fold it in half again. It's our right length. And then we'll flare out these legs to stand that up. Sure. Tony, that'll work. It's so long, but we'll get there. So what I end up doing, if you can see that there, um, my hand is a background. Kind of just making a V, for, that's where the, the uh, wick's gonna sit, and then have the little legs to come out to support it. So then that will go down inside here. And this is obviously gonna get held up a lot better um, once we get our wax in there. So you wanna try to get that pretty centered. Put your wick in there and pinch that up around it. This is just gonna help support that wick while you get your wax in. It doesn't have to be super pretty. Um, you're making this to use outside, right? You're not selling them. Yeah, it's got a lot of reflection from the light. There you go. Wick's in. Once you start getting your wax melted, you can start to, you can either spin it in there or try to pour it in there. Just watch that you don't burn the crap out of yourself. And I got it everywhere. <laughs> Something else you want to look out for, don't worry about that little guy, um, are these little vent slots here where the door goes. You don't want to go above that because once it starts melting, that's going to run out of your candle everywhere, which if you're outside, you may not care. Um, but just something to keep in mind. So you just want to make sure you go just shy of those. Final product here. Um, let's get your Altoids 10. It's a hot mess in there, but that'll melt, right? And this isn't pretty, but when you burn it, it will be. And that's not the point. So now our wick's in there. We're full of wax. I probably could have put a little bit more in there up to the um, hinges, but it'll do donkey. So you're going to need a lighter to light this. A lot of times if you're camping, you... You know, maybe you don't have a lighter, maybe you just have a ferro rod, depending, because I like to light my fires with ferro rods. So you can put a piece of cotton ball in there with some petroleum jelly on it and light that inside of here and that little fire will get this wick going, if that makes sense. So you could do one of those, put it in here and just keep it in your kit. Um, so that's the Altoids candle. You're probably thinking too, is why did we take smaller candles or nubs um, to make a different candle? Well, if they're like leftover junk candle pieces, then now they're they're reusable, right, when they weren't before. So you have this, if you have a fire going in there or you have your little um, candle going and you need to put it out, you can just close it and put it out. Um, you could keep this in your vehicle. You could put it in your backpack, um, wherever you wanna keep this so that you have it and it's just a small little thing. The other thing with this too is let's say you're really cold and you don't have, maybe you're somewhere in snowy or it's pouring rain and you don't have time to find kindling or something to start a fire, um, but you need to get warm, maybe you're getting hypothermic. What you can do is either is wrap a, a blanket or if you keep a military poncho with you, which I do, or a tarp even, um, or because generally you want something big that's got some room, right? So you can put that over you, wrap it around so it's closed off and sit maybe on the ground or against a tree and then have this, put it down between your legs and light it. And that will actually produce enough heat inside of that little mini shelter that you've built to warm you back up. Um, you can also light this to warm your hands if maybe you need to have this to dry out some sticks that are kind of damp before you get your big fire started. So these can be used for a lot of things. Um, and it's the Altoids 10 thing. Yeah.
something else to do. Um, I think that took me, I don't know, 30 minutes to do. It wasn't bad. So you can do these at home. You can make them, um, you can do them with all kinds of different containers as well. I just happen to like Altoids, so I have Altoids tins sometimes and I save them. Um, double weather would probably be better for the candles. I had to make sure I did that really slow because I didn't want to catch that uh, wax vapors on fire and cause myself bigger issues today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I like doing these little instructional type video things. Um, so if you want to see more of them, let me know down in the comments. Subscribe and share and somebody else can do it too. So the uh, hatchet one that I made about how to do a Harbor Freight hatchet is blown up like 400 and some odd people have watched that thing. So I guess that you guys like these. So till next time.